the Air Raid Sirens. I'm from Monday Morning Fallout. Monday Morning Fallout, of course, when we overreact to the football weekend. A lot to overreact to, actually. Just, oh, yeah. like, a lot. And there's a lot of different ways we could go with this. So, let's start. Our th my three big thoughts. First big thought, panning for data points. So, I've always been a big fan of the... I, mean, I don't know how much studying you've done of the Gold Rush. Do you remember the Gold Rush? Remember <laughs> yeah. that? Do I remember? No. <laughs> Personally, no. You don't? <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't there. How old are you? <laughs> anyway... Um, but the idea of panning for gold always struck me as very, like, very odd. Sure. You get the, 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 the sifter, and yeah. you, you kind of dip it into the water, and then you just kind of sift through, and maybe hoping, there's some hoping. gold in yeah. it, right? That's kind of what I feel like we're at right now with Texas high school football. Ah. Because right now, in through two weeks, there has been so much craziness going on. And a lot, week two was, was even, in, in my estimation, even wilder than week one. Mm. Just a lot of weird results coming out. Just a lot of just bizarre things that come across and you go, whoa, yeah. really? <laughs> you serious? Our Slack chat was just a barrage <laughs> of us going, are you guys seeing this? <laughs> the whole night on Friday night. And... It's very hard right now, I think, to sift through all the noise to get to the signal mm -hmm. because there's a lot of different factors. On one hand, like, here's one. We could have absolutely positively been wrong about a lot of teams. Sure. 100% possible. 100% mm -hmm. possible we're just wrong about a lot of teams. Also possible that there are just teams that are starting slow. That they that they that yeah. there's just been a lot of bad matchups and they're starting slow. It's also possible that the coaching changes have had a more profound impact than we thought. Mm -hmm. It's also possible <laughs> that the weather so just, has, just just, <laughs> has just <laughs> right has just has just made turn things upside down, especially this past weekend, where there are a lot of games that were played very like Absolutely. late and damp mm -hmm. and just all sorts of weirdness. There's all sorts of weird results. And right now, I feel like we're at the point where we're sifting through it and being like, all right, what's, where is the actual data point? Where is the actual thing that we can hitch our wagon to? Right. And so I think this may be, like, we're going to look back on week two in two weeks as one of two things. Either this giant, glaring harbinger just screaming at us in the sky being like, hey, it's going to be weird. <laughs> just going to be weird this year. Or in like five weeks, we're going to look back on week two and be like, huh, that was weird. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that? Remember that? <laughs> huh. And I don't know which one yet. And I've spent the weekend trying to figure it out, and I can't. Yeah, it's, man, I mean, just to roll off some of the, the scores, obviously, Crosby over Manville. Mm-hmm. Giddings beating the brakes off Wimberley. Beating the doors <laughs> off of them. Uh, that, I mean, we, me and Step said, you know, wouldn't be surprised if, Wimber if Giddings is for real and they they beat Wimberley. Not like that. I think Cy Ranch over Westlake. Well, Cy Ranch over what? Like, so many results where not even the result, or not even just the fact that, you know, one team beat the other, yeah. but the in style. the fashion, right, the in style. the fashion that it happened. And maybe weather, like you said, but even week one was really weird. I know. And so we're still kind of in a flow of maybe we over, I don't want to say overrated, but maybe we put too much stock in legacy with some teams. Oh, yeah. Like maybe, you know, with Wimberley, for it sure. was, oh, it's Wimberley. They're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And Giddings might be for real. Uh, speaking sure. of new coaching changes right there. Mm -hmm. So ah, it, exactly it, it right. really is where we're still in a spot where maybe it's not till week five where we really know what's happening with some of these teams. Thought number two, inflection point. I'm looking at the college football landscape right now, and I tweeted this, uh, um, and, and I, I feel really good about it, about how Texas won and Texas A&M lost, but try telling that to either fan base. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like fr Saturday night, especially Saturday night, we may look back at a moment as a moment in, in this state when things started to turn that r right now in the state of Texas, TCU is the best program in the state. That's not necessarily a hot opinion, but as far as the big legacy program, 
it's still Texas just because A&M has not been able to reach out and grab that crown, mm-hmm. right? They haven't. They've had moments, but even with Texas down, it feels like Texas A&M has just kind of, when they've had that chance to really take them over, it just hasn't happened. You kind of see the a conference title or a conference title appearance as yes. that, like, that hurdle. That's that hurdle, yeah. exactly. And A&M hasn't been able to get there. Yeah. I'm watching both games, Texas and Tulsa, and I'm watching A&M and Clemson, and I can't help but feel like maybe this is the moment when it starts to turn. And I wonder if in a couple of years we're going to look back on that weekend. And yes, Texas won and A&M lost, but boy, it sure doesn't feel like it. Right. And it sure feels like the worm is turning mm-hmm. on that. Now, this again could just be a black swan. Sure. And Texas could end up roaring back and, and, and get their get their S together and figure things out. And A and M may have just gotten up for this one big game and they may scuffle down the stretch and finish six and six. But at that moment on Saturday night, I couldn't help but feel like, man, this feels different. Yeah. And part of you wants to maybe be a little hesitant because of how uh similar to when A and M beat Bama. Mm-hmm. Right, the Manziel time, and obviously Texas was kind of in in their little mm-hmm. plateaued area, and people were like, "Oh, is this is this the moment?" And we kind of figured out, okay, that was sure. just a quick pe- a quick spike for AM. Not and it necessarily, absolutely could be that, right? It could be that, but I mean, it could be something else. It could be something else as well because Texas, both teams are in a new head coaching change right now. Mm-hmm. The program, the the narrative around, especially Texas, seems to be just the same. Yeah, right, and that's something that. We didn't expect to, for them to be competing for Big 12 championships this year, but that's something that we expected to change was the narrative. Yeah. When we put when we put Texas Jimbo Fisher on the cover, mm-hmm. obviously part a big part of that is that he's a great coach, but another part of that is that we felt like he was coming in and changing the attitude at that program. Right. And I'll tell you, on Saturday night was the first time I really felt that. Sure. I heard A&M fans say, oh, it's different, it's different, it's different. I'm like, okay, sure, mm-hmm. we'll see. The first time I felt it was Saturday night. And number three, ban injuries. Hashtag ban injuries. Let's get it trending. Uh, it, you may have missed it, but Jalen Catalan, the our 5A cover boy for in Dave Campbell's Texas football, the superstar, do-it-all athlete, safety essentially for uh, Mansfield Legacy, is out for the year with a knee injury. Um, and that was week one. Week two, uh, we lose Maverick McIver, the quarterback for San Angelo Central. He's out for the year. I believe it was a uh, an ACL and meniscus injury he's done for the year um we almost lost apparently we almost lost Rashawn Johnson right. the quarterback for Port Nature's Groves but he's apparently okay apparently um we can fix this real easy guys let's just start over let's just make injuries illegal <laughs> I feel like this is something we should have done a long time ago yeah we have the technology. Happened with it. J.K. Dobbins a couple years ago. Yeah. Happened, happened with too many guys. It's too many guys, especially early, like right. like week one and two. Like, yeah, no. if a guy gets injured in week nine, I'm like, dang it. Yeah. Okay, but we got nine weeks of him. Yeah, it was like, oh, man, that was that was a fun nine weeks. He got to play most of his last season if he's a senior. And, you but know. J.K. Dobbins got injured last year on, like, carry one? Carry number one or two? Yeah, something like that. Um, Jalen Catalan goes out. After one in the first game, and now Maverick McIver goes out in the second game. So we need to ban injuries. Three helmet stickers. Helmet sticker for Katie Tompkins running back R.J. Smith. 300 yards and six touchdowns on the ground, and he was the second best KDISD running back. <laughs> helmet sticker for Katie, Thompson, uh, Katie Tompkins running back R.J. Smith. Helmet sticker for Houston linebacker Austin Robinson. He showed out. We were wondering who was going to step up besides Ed Oliver on this defense, and uh, Austin Robinson was fantastic. Eight solo tackles, ten tackles total in their Molly whopping of Arizona. That was a whooping. That was a that was a that was a that was a punishment. <laughs> yeah. That was that was discipline. Starting to get excited about the Cougs. That was discipline. And Arlington athlete Jahari Rogers, three hundred and twenty nine yards and a touchdown passing, hundred and sixteen yards and two touchdowns rushing in their win over Arlington or over Byron Nelson. Uh, he was in studio on Fox Sports Southwest. Really impressive young man as well. Arlington athlete Jahari Rogers gets a helm sticker as well. Three teams to watch. Issue mentioned Giddings. Um, week one, they beat Rockdale, and we go, oh, that's a nice win. Yeah. Good job. They beat the defending champs, 17-16, really close, or 18-17. It was by one point. 17-16. 17-16. Um, great win, stuff like that. And then they beat the doors off of Wimberley. Wimberley. Yeah. Holy cow. If you go back and watch High School Scoreboard Live, Craig Way <laughs> literally reports the score to me 
on the air. Best moment of the show. And I'm it just like, wait, so what? <laughs> yeah. It was like a super genuine moment. It was a great reaction. I was like, no. Yeah. What? Are you kidding yeah. me? It was good. <laughs> so watch out for getting. This is going to sound weird, but but keep an eye on Rice. Yeah, man. I got to tell you, and I know they lost. They went to the islands and they lost. That game was close with about nine minutes left. And then I think um, I think Hawaii had like a defensive touchdown. They ran then and they ended up winning. Um, but not covering um, <sighs> in that game. This is a much like A and M. This feels like a different team. Yeah, man. Oh yeah. There's a different vibe around yeah, Rice right now. There's a lot of swagger. They feel like they can compete with people. And after watching two years of Rice looking listless and looking like, uh, well, here comes another butt kicking. This is refreshing. Watch out for Rice. And this is one. Watch out for San Saba. The Armadillos are 2-0, and and I don't know what you if you guys have seen what they've done the first two weeks. I'm not. I'm not definitely have not. Okay. <laughs> week one. <laughs> They're steamrolling people. <laughs> week, they are. They have outscored their first two opponents 106-6. <laughs> they beat Johnson City 53-6 in the opener, and then they beat Harper 53 to nothing. Um, they got 0-2 Junction coming up, too. They got Junction, Snook, Tom Moore. Then they get into a very difficult district. Goldthwaite, Heiko, and Crawford, all three of those on the road, not to mention Dillion to finish the year. I'm not saying they're going to win that district. What I'm telling Especially you is... Last, those last two games. I'm right telling you, if, 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 San, if, if, if San Saba is suddenly like dangerous, that district gets even weirder. Yeah. So watch out for that. Three teams to worry about. I'm worried about Montgomery. Montgomery's 0-2, and... Um, Kind of an ugly 0-2 as well. The, the, the Bears have struggled out of the gates. Um, they have given up uh, 84 points in their first two games to Viter and Barbers Hill. And uh, those are teams that I would classify as fine. Shouldn't be giving up 42 points to them. So well, Barbers Hill's head coach is no, no slouch. So. I guess that's true. <laughs> but can I worry about A&M Commerce? Uh, it's there, I, maybe, here's the thing. I've been, we've been spoiled. We've been spoiled with how... Just crushing they've been. Right. They just go out there and crush people's souls. But week one against AM Kingsville was super dicey. Yeah. It was very dicey. And then they beat William Jewell, like, what, 21, like 14? It's on the road. On the road. Yeah. Tell me everything you know about William Jewell. I, you, William and Jewell used to be in my conference. I used to you play know. William Jewell, Jewell oh, in so college. You know okay, a resident expert. Yeah, uh, well, I didn't play them in football. Yeah, no. I know their baseball team is very good. Okay, uh, I'm it's, just a little bit worried. It's a lovely campus not, in North Kansas City. Not super City. worried, right? Just like worried compared to. I the think. Well, okay. The, the, yeah. The Let's standard. see. What what is? Uh, yeah. I, thanks, Corey. Let's ask Corey Hogue, our okay. resident D2 expert. Give him a second. We'll go on to the next one. And we'll come back. Well, we'll also say it's not that it's not looking great. Get to us in final thoughts, Corey. <laughs> yeah, that Corey needs to tell us whether we should be worried about A&M Commerce. Or I would not. say it's not great that Midwestern states pummeling people like they pummeled yeah, number dude, two that, West maybe Florida. Maybe that's the yeah. part of it. <laughs> so yeah. is that they 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 destroyed West Florida, who was the team at Commerce beat in the title game last yeah. year. So. Right, but if you know enough about the Lone Star Conference, and Corey will attest to this. Midwestern State's great at looking amazing in the regular mm. season, That's and then fair. the playoffs That's hit, fair. and then the Midwestern State fans go, right. "Well, it's the playoffs. This is gonna this is gonna fall apart." <laughs> and finally, I'm worried about Albany. 0 and two. To start the year, losses to Colorado City, which okay, that's fine. Good uh, that's, a, that's a three A, yeah. um, and then a loss to Dublin, twenty six to twenty. Yeah. That one, but that's just another one of those weird. Yeah. Games. And again, that's a three over two A. But I'm a little right. bit worried about Albany, at least out of the gates. That is Monday morning fallout. 